guys so today I'm doing a video showing you where all the magic happens when I'm doing YouTube videos and it's right here if you can see in this wonderful hall it's Partick Borough Halls and Partick it looks quite churchy looking I'm taking you to church and it's in here I do my videos this is my home away from home um, for those that don't know, I actually work in here full time for Glasgow Life and um, I do other things. As you know, I'm a dance teacher as well and so I do like dance related things in here, dance shows, dance workshops. Um, so when I started my YouTube channel, I went to my boss and said, could I rent the hall out for an hour once a week to do some makeup tutorials? Because a lot of people were saying to me, you need to get a professional backdrop. Um, they were not filling my dining room with my wedding crystal in the background. Um, I don't have a beauty room so um, they were saying you know go and invest in a backdrop. I said I can do one better. I'll go speak to my boss and that's what I did. And he was super supportive and said I should have been doing YouTube years ago. And I never because to be truthful, I never ever really watched makeup tutorials. Um, I went on YouTube to listen to music and to watch dancing. Um, and for me, why would I make a video showing people how to do makeup and then they don't need to hire me because they know how to do it themselves? Like, it's the, it'd be the opposite of promoting me as uh, in, 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 in my freelance business, um, I didn't I didn't see it as, I've seen it as counterproductive, so it wasn't something that I was really in, ever interested in. But I did see makeup tutorial videos, um, and what I'd seen, they were all very very good. Um, but it wasn't something that I would sit and watch for hours because. I know how to do a smoky eye, I know how to do eyeliner, um, I know how to contour, so I wasn't, it wasn't something I was wanting to do. I love dancing and I could sit and watch people dance for hours, which I did. And I had no idea that people made this a career. Clueless. Um, I guess this is a good time to tell you why I then ended up making a YouTube channel. But first of all, the star curtain on the stage, I can't show you. There is refurbishments going on to the stage and um, the stage is out of bounds. So I told my boss that this would be the video I'd be showing today. I said, everybody thinks that I am videoing um, in a photography studio and I want to show them where it is that I actually video is like just don't go on the stage so as you can see it's I mean they have hazard tape and all that I mean they've blocked off the stairs to get on the stage and um, it's a hazard area so I can't take you there and show you the star curtain that comes in all different settings. You can have it all twinkly. I just keep it static because I think it'd be distracting having flashing lights going on in the background. Um, so, yeah, I'll tell you why I started my YouTube channel. Um, I think I'll take a seat. Get comfy. Story time. So why did I start a YouTube channel? Well, it all started because I was on maternity leave with my son and I decided, while I had all this free time, I'll go and do some um, temping uh, makeup jobs in retail, which was all good. I applied to a company I'd worked before with and um, I didn't get the job and it was fine, but at the time, I had to take some unpaid maternity leave for me to get this job for when the job was about to start. So my paid maternity leave was running out and I had to take it unpaid maternity leave, that makes sense, um, for me to take on this 
um, temp job during the summer. So um, I never got it and it was fine. And um, the thing that bothered me was that they knew I was on unpaid leave from my work. I had no wages coming in, I hadn't been paid for two months. And um, they just didn't bother getting back to me. They said they would get back to me within a week. It was past a week. And then I felt like a stalker, like constantly phoning this manager to find out what the deal was. I knew I wasn't being hired, but I wanted her to confirm it so I can then get on to my boss and say, I'm coming back to work and I can start bringing money into the house because I have not been paid for like two months. So um, that was fine. I then had all these holidays um, that I had to take um, because I'd been off on maternity leave for so long, 11 months. Um, so when Christmas came, I said, there's loads of temping jobs in the makeup um, departments. Um, I'll do um, some temping jobs. So I went to a different, uh, I went to the same company, but um, a different shop and um, same thing. Never got it, which is fine, but they didn't get back to me. I was fuming this time because this is two managers from the same company are just incompetent at taking the list of names that they have to phone and saying, you're being unsuccessful. I was fuming, absolutely fuming. And then the feedback as well, the first manager said, it really boils down to the fact that um, you, but you, the, the customer, right, which is the model who you bring in that day, you weren't speaking um, enough to her. Fair enough. I wasn't even going to argue. The point was that we were in a room and there was another girl there and she was asking her questions. I didn't want to speak um, while she was, when, when she was talking to her, I thought it was rude. So it was, I wasn't even, go I was just like, fair enough, that's fine. Didn't even like put an argument up about, oh, well, that the reason why I wasn't speaking. It's, it's fine, it's no problem, okay, I'm going back to my job. I have to say, I have not wanted to be a makeup artist to get into retail, okay? That wasn't why I wanted to do makeup. Retail work pays crummy, it is rubbish. The job I'm in the now pays a lot more, a lot more, okay? So, I'm doing this for the experience for my CV, okay? Um, what I would realistically I would love is to be signed by an agency and do, you know, shoots and TV work. You know, that would be the fantasy dream job. Okay, and to do that, you've got to pay your dues, and you, you know, you need to, you need to work all the assistant free work and do and do some retail work, and you just got, you've got to pay your dues, and I'm prepared to do that. So the second manager, who eventually, when I got a hold of her, which was the day before the job was actually meant to start, um, said to me, the reason why I never got through was because what I said wasn't customer friendly. Now, when I said that to my husband, he was like, oh, that's rubbish, that's absolute rubbish. I mean, calm down. What she means by customer friendly in the makeup world is, your, your terminology has to be um, customer friendly. For instance, if I was to say someone has sallow skin, that doesn't sound customer friendly. You've got to say things like they have an olive complexion. You know, you don't want to say someone's very reddish face. You've got to say they're English rose. So, you know, um, and I am aware of this. So the, the, the part that she was saying that I wasn't customer friendly and this was the sort of deal breaker for them. And I get that, you know, more than your, your makeup chops, um, you need to be able to sell. You need to be able to talk to customers. I get that, you know, talk about a car salesman has, has the power. You, you know, you've got to be able to sell. And I have worked for them before and they know I haven't hit my targets. Right, so I think there's a whole bunch of issues that was involved, but they were saying to me, they're 
feedback to me was how I was speaking to the person I brought in as a model that day who was supposed to act like a client, a customer. So anyway, they said that I wasn't customer friendly um, and the reason why I was when I was telling them about how to put powder on their eyelids because of oil control and stuff. Well, when I was applying the translucent powder onto the eyelids, I was about to say, your eyelids sweat the most than any other area of your face and you want to apply your translucent powder to stop it creasing. But I stopped myself before I said sweat because I thought that's not customer friendly. And I said, you know, for oil control. <laughs> Anyway, because I was really, you know, try, you know, it's like when you go in for a trial, you try to do all the hygiene thing, really precise, you, try, you know, you're just like extra cautious of how you talk and, and, and what you're doing. Anyway, and because I stopped myself, I kind of stuttered. So I guess you kind of thought, I didn't know what I was talking about and I was stuttering. And there was no one else there getting a trial. It was only me and she was hovering off the top of me. Um, which was fine, that's okay, but um, that's, I knew exactly what she was talking about. And I said, look, I was only explaining why you put powder on your eyelids. And she was like, look, see, at the end of the day, we loved you, but um, when it goes to the trial, there's nothing that we can do. It's out of our hands. Um, I'm really sorry that no one's got back to you. But I was furious. I was, fu I was not because I didn't get a job. I, I don't care about about the job. It was I've already worked for them before. I have that on my CV. I was just wanting to do some extra. Um, it, it, that is irrelevant that I didn't get the job. It was the fact that they didn't contact me. And this was twice this happened. Same company, different managers. Is this their policy? You just you, you say you're going to contact people and don't contact them. I was so angry. And I was like, I've got a point to prove now. So I'm going to start a YouTube channel up, showing people how to um, do their makeup. And not because I thought I would go viral or that, you know, I'll make lots of money. Because I had no idea that people made a career. I watched dancing videos. No one is talking about what they're sponsoring on dancing videos. They're just sharing what they have worked really hard at doing. Um, and yeah, I had, so I also, which caught, I used to make videos up for people's birthdays and it would just be easier to upload it to uh, YouTube and send it to them. So, and it would maybe get 20 views or 80 views. I knew videos just don't go viral. So I wasn't like, I'm going to show them and I'm going to have a video go viral. No, no, no. I just wanted to have archives of basically M.M. Terry volume one makeup brushes and if anybody said that I can't teach and you've got to remember I'm a teacher I'm a teacher for dance so you're telling me that I can explain things and that's what I do every week is explain to people how to um, how to dance how to move their body and I, I was just like oh I have a point to prove to you and to me I need to prove this to myself as well that I can teach makeup so I made these videos and when I started researching makeup channels I started finding out people made this a career and I was like oh my god this is the dream job this is the dream job honestly if you I mean I cannot believe the lifestyle that these YouTubers, it looks really glam, it probably isn't really glam, but it looks really glam. And I was like, this is a dream job. So when I was telling all my friends that I'm going to start a YouTube channel, I thought they were going to be like, oh, so cheesy. They were like so supportive, like you should have been doing this years ago, years ago. But they all thought I was wanting to do it to promote my freelance business, which I was like, that's counteractive to my freelance business, but never mind. Um, no, I want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> I had no idea how you go about making YouTube videos viral, but I was gonna learn. Let me tell you, 
You have to be a social media whore. And for one day, I basically got up, didn't change out my pajamas, got on my computer, only stopped to basically change and feed my son. And when my husband came home, I was still in my pajamas. The house was a mess. And he was like, seriously, get a grip. I can't do it. I will post what I can post, but I can't live like that. Like, what is it? Um, Instagram, you're supposed to like post on Instagram five times a week to have like an active account. And then you've got a hashtag about 30 things on each photo. And it seems easy enough, but you're there for hours. First of all, I don't I have anything interesting enough to post five times a week. Like, I, I don't take enough interesting photos. Um, so I will post when I can. Tweeting everywhere you go. You've got to tweet everywhere you go. And it seems easy enough. You're on the computer for hours. You, you know, no one is going to bring you these uh, views on a silver platter. You've got to work for them. I sit and go through tons and tons of videos, um, contacting, talking to um, other YouTubers and asking them, hey, look at my channel. Um, and that takes hours. It takes time. I do what I can. But... I was watching a video on a YouTuber talking about how long it took them to make it. Um, and it, they were a couple. They worked, she worked 70 hours a week on her computer promoting her channel. Her husband did 20 odd hours at the weekends. He had to work full time. That's the money that was, they had coming in. They spent a fortune on cameras and all this professional gear. And it took six months before they, could, they even cleared a hundred pound. And then it took a year um, before they could start classing it as like a wage coming in. Um, and so like the sort of ballpark of like numbers, followers you need to sort of make money on YouTube is around about what I've been told from videos that I've seen is about 130,000 um, followers and that gives you like the equivalent of a minimum wage job so um i see and, and and also all your big big youtubers they haven't like just done this overnight they have been like doing this for like seven years before they made it you know it was like it, this is a marathon not a sprint so the dream job probably won't be happening anytime soon um but that's fine because you know what i love it I absolutely love it. When you hear YouTubers saying, I'm not doing this for the views, I absolutely just love like, making videos. I 100% believe them because the best thing for me is sitting with my friends laughing at my videos. And when I'm going out, they're like, are you vlogging this? Are you vlogging this? I'm like, no, I'm just coming to hang out. They're like, oh, when am I going to be in your next video? My husband's shouting, oh, when are you doing the, the husband does your makeup tag? He loves it. We are having so much fun. I love all the comments. I love watching your videos. Um, and it's, it's the best, I will say, like if you want to have a hobby and you don't know what to do, start a channel up. Um, and as, but don't, if you're wanting to seriously, like, make a channel that's gonna, I don't know, get some serious numbers straight away. Don't do a beauty channel. This is one of the things, like a, a video I seen last month, it's like the, the beauty at the channels on YouTube, it's just saturated, it's heavily saturated. But I don't know what else I could do. I definitely wouldn't do a dance channel because I'm not good enough. Dance channels are phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, and I love them, I love watching them. But I also love the makeup channels. The makeup channels, um, you know, I, f I mean, everybody can can do this. It's not difficult. The, the, the makeup channels that are so successful are the ones that have got personality. You know, you're watching them more for, um, for a laugh than anything else. So, um, but I still had my point to prove that I could do makeup, so I did. I did my list that I made of videos that I wanted to put out there that show me giving proper tutorials. I will say I was really bad at editing. My very first video, I got a new computer, didn't know how to edit on it because 
uh, you know, it's just like getting a new phone, everything's slightly different, and I tried to YouTube how to edit on the, the new MacBook Pro, and because it's so new, there was no videos up on it, so I just posted it unedited, and then I was so, because I had this point to prove, I didn't want to edit out things, and my videos were so long. My first vlog was 50 minutes long. My first full face makeup tutorial was 45 minutes long. It was so long, so boring. Um, I think I'm definitely getting better and knowing what I like to do and what I don't like to do by trying out different things. Um, but I'm trying things out all the time. Anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's why I started my channel. That's, that's how it all happened, how it all came about. So, the other thing I wanted to discuss with all of you is because it's been all over Facebook about this new TV show that's starting in Glasgow called Glow. And what everybody's been saying on Facebook is cringe. <laughs> it should be called cringe. The whole thing is cringe from the name to the people that they had interviewing that they showed for the, the promotion of it. Cringe, cringe, cringe. And the other thing that everybody was saying was they don't want to see Ponzi posers um, because that's not Glasgow. They want to see Buckfast and Jakes. Well, I don't want to see Buckfast and Jakes. I want to see Buckfast, but not Jakes. Um, I'm going to tell you my thoughts, and I understand these shows are really popular, right? But I don't really get these shows. I don't like them, and I don't really get them. But they're super popular and lots of people do. So I get that. And also get that people who are behind this want to show a different side of Glasgow. They don't want to show the stereotypical Buckfast and Jakes and make us a, you know, city of alcoholics. They want to basically rip off Only Ways Essex and churn out I think a poor man's version of it. I think we should be, first of all, we're not Ponzi posers and wine bars. That is not Glasgow. And I can just picture the scene. There'll be these head to toe, gorgeous girls sitting in a wine bar discussing some guy called Dave who is supposed to phone them and never phoned them. And then they'll turn around and Dave will walk in with some girl called Claire, for instance. And they'll be like, oh, he just walked in with Claire. Da, da, da. Cut to commercial. And then the next episode will be Claire and this girl down by a road having a sit down to clear the air about Dave. Which Claire will then say, I dumped him because he was cheating on me. And the next minute, Dave is bad boy Dave from Glasgow. <sighs> I can't. I can't, I can't deal with that. This is why I don't watch these shows. It's rubbish. Um, and like, like, what is it? Made in Chelsea, and they've got that guy Spencer, bad boy Spencer. In reality, in real life, in Glasgow especially, that boy would be chewed up and spit out with most girls from Glasgow. And I cannot, cannot deal with, you know, having some, you know, bad boy whoever, Ponzi poser, and these girls just running about with Michael Kors bags and bodycon dresses. It bores me and it's been done a million times. And I know there's an audience for it, but that audience has, is, is already watching Olivia's Essex, Made in Chelsea, um, Geordie Shore. Why don't, this is my thoughts, if you're going to do it here, then it should be done right. And Glasgow is best known for its music scene. You think about like all the incredible bands that have been discovered here and you know come from here, um, and even like the biggest DJ in the world, Calvin Harris, comes from here. Um, you know you've got your classic wet wet wet. Sorry, I'm such a big wet 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 fan. Um, you've got Biffy Clyro, Primal Scream, Oasis was discovered here. This is what I would do. I would have some cute indie boys trying to make it at King Tut's um, and then you would have 
all the drama from the groupies, you know, the one girlfriend who's saying, you can make it on your own. Get rid of these losers. And then you have that one girlfriend from one of the band members who wants to join the band and he's trying to convince his bandmates that she needs to join. Um, I just think that would be so cool. You, you know, that's what we're known for. We're also known for our universities. You think about, like, who has the best style? Students, right? They're going to give you something much more interesting than a, a bodycon dress and a Michael Kors bag. They're more adventurous and innovative with their hair, their makeup, their clothes, way cooler. And, of course, they're the ones that are going to all the gigs. Um, I just think... You know, that would be such a fun show. And then you've got, oh, they've made it. They're at the new, Newcomers Tent at Tea in the Park. And you get all the backstage at Tea in the Park. And, you know, all the shenanigans that's going on with the people jumping about crazy in the mud. And the, 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 even the name, Glow, I don't know who came up with that name. But you should do something that resonates with the Glaswegian public. Like... If they were going for the band thing, I would have done Glasgow Boys, although there's an art expedition called Glasgow Boys, um, so I don't know if that could work, but, or Pure Day Brilliant, um, or I, I don't know, something, something like that, The Scotch, I know it's a pub, but The Scotch. Anyway, you know, Glaswegians are so down to earth and they're so funny and you think about all that music, it'd be like Spinal Tap meets Nashville, with loads of Glasgow banter. Amazing. That, that's the show I would love to see. Um, not Glow. Ugh, it's just a rip-off of so many of these other shows that's been done and done time and time again. <gasps> it's boring. So, that's my rant. Um, I would love to hear what you think. Oh! And, yes, I do want to see Bucky because people in Glasgow do drink Buckfast that are school teachers, police officers. My husband drinks it, what's for the MOD. And, you know, I've got a friend, she's a girl, her and her husband drinks it and she organises people funerals. And they're so bougie with their Buckfast. You sit and go, oh, you drinking that stuff? They're like, oh, this is expensive wine, you know. <laughs> and they start looking at the numbers, saying, how do you drink yours? I like mine's chilled. No, I like mine's room temperature. Um, they, you know, they're, they're really, really, you know, defensive about their bucket. I don't want to see jakes, right? I just want to see people being bougie, because that would, that would be comedy gold, sitting in the room, being all bougie with their buck fast. I don't want to see people sitting, sipping wine in a wine bar. No, thank you. I want to see gigs, brilliant music, and I know people will say, no decent self-respecting band is going to sell out. Do you know what? Sell out. You're only young ones. Take the job that you get to do something and be paid to do something that you love and have your music played on television every week. Take the money. Take it and go with it and, you know, get paid to do what you love. So that's my thoughts. This is where... I do all my filming on that stage that you're not getting to see. It's probably going to be out of bounds for about a month. So it'll be back to basics in my dining room in front of my wedding crystal for a little while until this is fixed. Um, so, yes, I hope you enjoyed this video and liked the little room tour. Ooh. And I'll see you all again. Bye.